All right, guys, so I'm off of Kennywood right now, and I'm enjoying myself, having a good old time. And uh, I would really hope that you were there, but you're not. But I thought there'd be a good way to help you while I'm gone. And so what I'm gonna do is go through number three and four from yesterday and uh, try to explain it so that you understand it. You could opt to just sit there, write down the numbers and learn nothing, or you could pay attention and try to figure out um, where we're coming up with all this stuff. So there's one equation you gotta use the entire time, and that's just that momentum is mass times velocity. That's the only equation we're gonna use uh, for this entire worksheet. And really, aside from the impulse momentum equation, uh, that's the only one you have to concern yourself with, this unit. So let's look. We want to know the momentum of the baseball before the collision. So I'm going to take the mass of the baseball, which is 0.15, and I'm going to multiply that by the speed of the baseball, which is 45, and I'm going to get 6.75 meters per second. That's a little bit messy, so I'm going to rewrite it. Again, we, we took 0.15, we multiplied by 45, and that got us 6.75. All right, now uh, we want to know the, ma uh, sorry, the momentum of the catcher's mitt. Well, it says the catcher's mitt was originally at rest. Well, if you're at rest, uh, no matter what your mass is, you're going to have no momentum because zero times anything is zero. The total then would be 6.75 plus zero, it would be 6.75 kilogram meters per second um, in momentum. Now we said that in every collision, momentum is conserved. Therefore, the momentum after the collision for this system is also 6.75. Um, hmm. We also want to know the momentum of the individual pieces, the, the baseball and the catcher's mitt, right? after they, those two things collide. In order to do that, we need to know what the velocity is. But we don't know right at this moment what it is, but we do know that the uh, momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. We do know that the momentum after the collision is 6.75. We know that the mass of the baseball is 0.15 and the mass of the catcher's mitt is 0.25. And since they move together, right, when you catch that ball, the ball and the mitt, they move together, I'm gonna to combine both of their masses here and multiply them by that common speed. So I get uh, 0.4 when you add those two things together. I'll divide both sides by 0.4. And I get a speed of something like 16.875, if memory serves correctly, okay? Now, that's only the speed, remember, that's not the momentum. They're looking for momentum. So what I have to do is then take, again, mass times velocity. I have to take the mass of 0.15, multiply that by the 6.75, I'm sorry, not 6.75, this velocity here, 16.875, and uh, I'm not that good with numbers. I'm pretty good with numbers, but not so good that I can do that in my head. So the key I made tells me. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, the key I made tells me that that's approximately 2.53. Okay, now there's two things I can do here. I can reason out that I know the total momentum is 6.75, and I know that 2.53 units of that momentum is in the baseball. So I can just subtract those two things to find the momentum of the catcher's mitt. But I like to calculate things directly, so I'm going to take the mass of the catcher's mitt times the speed of 16.875, and that will equal my 4.22. And then I can go ahead and do a check. 2.53 plus 4.22 does in fact equal 16.75.
I'm sorry, 6.75. So I know that my answer is correct there. Lastly, then I want to analyze the change in momentum. Well, the uh, momentum before the collision was 6.75, the momentum after is 2.53, so that is a difference of negative 1.22, okay? Now, all of these units here are kilogram meters per second, but I don't have enough room to put them all there, so just listing the magnitudes. If I go from zero to a positive 4.22, of course, I'm adding 4.22 in momentum, okay? The overall change is zero. Okay? That will always happen when there are no net external forces. Okay? The momentum before and after is going to be the same. Okay. Any questions? Too bad, because I can't answer them right now. Ask me them tomorrow. Um, let's go on and we'll take this one. This one is unique to all the problems we've looked at so far because now both objects are moving. And remember, momentum Yes, we calculated P equals MV. But we have to remember that momentum is a vector, okay? So direction matters. For our truck, right? The truck is moving to the right. We'll say that the right is the, our positive direction, okay? It's moving at a positive four meters per second. It's got a magnitude, I'm sorry, a mass of 4,800. So that is 4,800 kilograms times four, and that's going to give me, what, uh, 19,200. Okay, again, it's kilogram meters per second. I don't have the room to put it there. For the car, the car is just 1,200 um, kilograms, but it's moving in the negative direction at 12 meters per second. That gives me a momentum of negative 14,400. Okay. Now the total momentum, we would find it the same way. We would add these two up, right? When you add this together, you get a total of 4,800. Okay. So even though we've got this much momentum, 19,200 moving to the right and 14,400 moving to the left, because the momentum in the rightward direction is bigger, our total momentum is in that rightward direction. Afterwards, bad news for the car, right? The car is now moving in the opposite direction with uh, the total momentum of both of them adding up to 4,800. Remember, we're talking about no external forces acting here, and so the momentum is conserved. Again, right, we want to know how fast they're moving before we can figure out how how much momentum each one of them has after the collision. So the momentum after the collision was 4,800 um, kilogram meters per second. The mass, now they're, they've linked bumpers, right? They're entangled and they're moving together. So I have to combine the masses. And so I've got 4,800 Just lucky right here. 4,800 plus 1,200 times our unknown speed. We know the, the velocity, rather, is to the right, so this should end up being positive. Um, and we know that it's less than, uh, well, we don't know that yet, so let's just divide, right? 4,800 plus 1,200 is 6,000. Kilograms cancel out, and we're left with a speed of eight meters per second. Right? So the trucks slowed down, obviously, right? When it, when it hits something, it's going to slow down. Um, and the car actually speeds up in the um, opposite direction. All right, so now we just to find the momentum after the collision, we do the same calculation we've been doing this whole time. All right, we take the mass, which is 4,800, and we multiply that by the speed, the velocity rather, of eight meters per second, and we get 3,000, I'm sorry, that is 0 0.8. 3,840 kilogram meters per second. We're gonna take this one at 1,200 kilograms. Times 
0 0.8 meters per second, and we get 960 kilogram meters per second. Okay. Now, if you add these two up, you're going to get 4,800. Let's see what kind of change we're talking here. When you go from 19,200 down to 3840, you lose 1,500. I'm sorry, 15,360 kilogram meters per second in momentum. When you go from a negative 14,400 to zero, that's 14,400 plus another 960. That gives me a positive for 15,360. Okay. So this is the momentum lost by the truck. This is the momentum gained by the car. Turns out there is no net change in momentum because there are no external forces acting here. I hope that helped a lot. Um, remember, that's all you need. Momentum is mass times velocity. And the momentum in a closed system, that is one where there's no external forces acting, no net external forces acting, uh, is going to be conserved. So the momentum in the system beforehand is going to equal the momentum afterwards. If you would like to get a jump on the, what may be the last homework assignment of the year, it is on the uh, front desk. And then look at something like that. There are just three types of problems. The first problem is an explosion. The second problem is a perfectly inelastic collision, similar to what we've just done on this worksheet. And the last one is an elastic collision. We're going to go over this type in class tomorrow. We've analyzed both of these already. Uh, but good luck. If you need any help, um, save those questions for tomorrow.